All right, we're into session three. What I'm going to work on now is just a little bit of background information. Almost out of water in my pen, but that's kind of cool. So I'm just, I'll show you in a minute how to reload these. What I'm doing right now is just kind of working in like a wash into the background, trying to get it very loose and keeping it warm. And I decided for my design concept, I would kind of keep a warm background to maybe kind of the the cooler violets that are kind of rolling in this. Of course, that's a little bit on my complementary color schemes. So again, those of you that are into strong design and uh, teaching kind of high school, that's what I'm really kind of making these for. It's something for my high schoolers to do if they're stuck at home. Uh, the intent is to at least have a safe channel for them to watch that's not clicked with too many ads. Maybe they'll leave me alone for a little while chose to go outside just to get out of the indoors so I've got this wonderful melody of birds and probably dogs. What I'm allowing this to do is I'm letting the black charcoal kind of mix into the color of the crown and I'm, again I want this to be very sketchy and a very loose rendition just because I feel like when you get outside and you start working if you try to make everything so perfect it gets very stuffy and it doesn't have that sketch quality and this one I wanted to kind of look like it was you know inked not so much painted again you can say that I'm actually working the side of the crown now and where you pick up a lot of pigment it's gonna give you a lot of color and then you can kind of flow out from the edge and when it lo what I love about this is I'm also pulling a little bit of that crown out and you can see you can make these beautiful marks most people like to do, you know, to put it down and put the watercolor on it and blow the color, you know, and let the color go. And I thought this is super expressive and has a nice flow kind of extending from. And what I'm doing here is kind of creepy at the same time, keeping it almost like a pattern sweeping from the flowers. I don't have to do a lot of mixing here because that's going to happen with my water soluble base. That's the beauty of these crowns and products, is you don't have to do a lot of mixing per se. And again, I don't do a lot of outlining, but I can kind of show you how we can come in and save some areas later with a little bit more details. All right, and that kind of gives you a little idea of what I'm doing there. A couple other things that I like to do when I'm uh, dealing with products is I don't ever recycle or throw anything away so I recycle quite a bit of products and one of the things I decided to do is just to kind of say okay I'm at home I don't have anything to paint with these are some colors I absolutely don't wear anymore and what people don't realize is this is just a color base and my wonderful water pen can take what basically is eye makeup and it will have a little glitter to it too and I can paint with eye makeup and there's a lot of glitter surfaces in there. Depending on the color you'll get a little different surface and you can kind of see that giving me a granule surface. And I have a lot of kids, oh, I don't have any paint at home. Well I guarantee you, you got some old makeup you don't like to wear anymore. And that can give you some really neat surfaces in your work and so that's why I decided to kind of pick up some of these colors. I don't know when I bought this, this is really old. And what's cool is I can get a lot of different kind of surface textures. And it's got uh, texture. So this one has a little bit of a glitter, which is giving me some beautiful texture. Another product that you can paint with from your house that you don't really think about is coffee. I've seen a lot of YouTube videos with coffee. And I thought, wow, what a great way to go. So if you are ingenious and you feel like you have nothing at home to paint with, I promise you, open up a drawer and just kind of look through it. Uh, I'll tell you another secret. Your Crayola markers are water soluble and they make great water color. I just don't actually have any markers at home. So any water-based product would work in this uh, process. And again, these brushes are great. You can kind of see me still moving this around. If it says water soluble, it will continue to move. So keep that in mind when you kind of make your choices. So that's why I said you have to get in there and get out of there. Uh, again, I'm wetting the makeup. I just squeezed the brush a little bit, got a little bit of uh, water on the makeup, and I'm gonna kind of use that as the browns in my base. And I gotta kind of make a decision here. I think I'm gonna go right there and maybe make that a little different. 
I'm using a little bit of negative space technique right there. And I'm using a lot of terms for those of people that have probably been in my class. They're going to know those terms. If you haven't been with us and you're not a part of our program, you're probably going to go, okay, I'm not sure what negative space means. Negative space is the area around an object. So it's anything that you would describe maybe as a background. And sometimes that flips. Sometimes the foreground and the background flip for negative space. Now, I'm not worried about texture here because this is kind of an experiment. When you experiment, it's exactly that. Just put it in there and see what happens and see what it does when you put another layer and another layer and another layer. And I'll come back later and I kind of notice I can kind of play with the textures here. And kind of keep that as like a freezing to the bottom. All right, um, let me go ahead and try another object or two. This was a luminous liquid highlighter. All right, um, got it somewhere really cheap. And it's, I'm just gonna squeeze a little bit out and kind of use it like paint. And that is exactly what it is. It's just kind of a pinkish color. And again, it's makeup. And it has a bit of a glitter to it. And I'm just gonna kind of put it in as a, a little bit of a glitter. And I had no idea what that would look like on the surface. And I kind of like it. Again, don't be afraid to add to your work. The point here is to experiment, use what you have, and see what happens. Even if you just painted this with makeup, it might be pretty interesting. Uh, some of the colors that the kids wear now are so vivid. Now, after this one, I would have to come through. I think I would wash the brush after this, just because this is kind of a uh, chalky substance. It's more of a paint. It's not as, as soluble, I think, as the water. We'll see what happens as it dries. And I'm going to go ahead and use a little bit of this in the center. It has a nice shiny surface to it. And you can kind of see how it looks. Just painting it down. I don't know if the sun is catching it for you and the camera the way it's catching it for me. It has a beautiful kind of glittery surface. And then I can come back and work around that. So again, use what you have. Don't be afraid. Go out, get what you can. And then use what you have at home. Don't be afraid to use what you have. Obviously, I'm going to need some sort of green. Now, on this one, I think I would want to wash it. I'm going to go ahead and just kind of use my hands. And I'm going to do a little bit of painting. For those of you that haven't used a water brush, okay, usually you have to fill them yourself. They'll come empty. This one has a black lid on it. And at first I thought I had to take it off, but actually you just kind of have to hold it and kind of suck up water in a tube. And sometimes I have to take it off if I only have my water bottle. This one may be a little bit different. So you have to pop your little area out. And then you simply just pour water. And then I'm going to go out of the rain so I'm not all over my crown. So you just pour water in on this one again. I'm going to go ahead and pop this back in. And a lot of people ha have to laugh when they take them out of the package. They don't know how to get on. I can't get mine to work. Okay, you do have to open it, take a little uh, part out. And I don't even know if that's on the directions of some of them. What I'm doing right now is just cleaning it. And let the water drip through and clean. And again, if you've never used a water, a pre-loaded water brush, I I'll tell you, they're, they're my new wonderful go-to kind of like a pre-loaded India ink pen back in the day when we used to have to load them. Uh, the greens in here are really not pleasant to me. I don't like any of them. They're super bright. They're not very natural. So the neat thing is I already had some brown on my pen. So I was like, yes, I can probably get a little more natural looking green. And I was right. There's a more of an earth tone. And again, I'm going to put that in quick. How did I know that was going to happen? Uh, years and years and years of art training. Anytime you mute a green with a brown or a red even, you get a more natural green and you don't get that cartoony, unbelievable, awful green that comes right off that crown. Okay, but you're going to start to see as I clean my brush, that cartoony green is going to show up. It's not going to be this natural, beautiful green. Um, most kids want to have that super, super, super bright color in their work, and that's okay. That's, that's part of their natural sensibilities in their youth. So go for it, you know. Go if it, you want a super bright green down there, get after it. Nobody's going to worry about it. I'm sure not. Right. 
Somehow I feel a little bit like Bob Ross today. Happy little leaves. Happy little swoops of leaves. <laughs> you know, I love Bob Ross. I mean, I didn't actually I did not like Bob Ross when I was in high school, but I actually really appreciate him now. I, I, man, we should have some more PBS Bob Ross. All right. And again, I'm doing that wonderful sweep, and you can see that my color is fresh again because my brush has gotten clean. But again, I think a contam contaminated brush is like the best thing in a work of art because you get all those beautiful natural green colors that I wouldn't have gotten. And then I come back in, and now usually I say, I always say, keep it light until it's right. You see me mixing my colors again. Keep it light until it's right. I'm going to go slow down just a little bit. And what I'm looking for is, you know, where maybe the shadow would be. And keeping this, again, fresh, light, quick, just touching it and rolling. And I'll come back in and work this a little bit for your next video and have some more things done and kind of show you a little bit more of like how to finish it up and polish it up and make it look a little bit more naturalistic and not so sketchy. So that's something I'll work on off camera because you're probably going to get a little tired just watching me paint. But hopefully I've got you started and you can create your own comb flowers. And then I'll come back in my last video and give you some suggestions on how to texturize and finish up the background.